Today I'm going to be talking about what you need to know if you are dating or in a relationship with someone who suffers from depression. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kimberly Hale. I'm a men's life dating and relationship coach and I support good hearted men to find deeply loving relationships. Now the truth is dating someone who suffers from depression can be both a rewarding but also a very challenging experience. In today's video, I'm going to help you understand how to navigate this type of relationship dynamic and understand a little bit more about depression as we go along. Now, first things first, the most common form of depression is also known as major depressive disorder, and it is a mental health condition that affects how a person is thinking, feeling, and ultimately behaving. Many of us are familiar with depression causing persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness, but this can also lead to a disinterest in activities that were once enjoyable to the person. There's also different types of depression that each have unique characteristics and symptoms. And while this video isn't going to go into great detail about each one of the types, it's important that you understand that depression can exist in a range. The most common form of depression is major depressive disorder, which involves the persistent low mood, the loss of interest and pleasure in most activities, but it also may lead to difficulty concentrating, and these types of individuals might be entertaining thoughts of harming themselves. There's also seasonal affective disorder, also known as SAD, which is a type of depression that typically occurs during certain seasons, such as fall or winter, when there is much less natural sunlight. The symptoms can be similar to that of major depressive disorder, but they tend to be seasonal in nature. Now, there's also postpartum depression, which can occur after a woman gives birth to a child. And there's also situational depression, or also known as adjustment disorder with a depressed mood, which can be a temporary and reactive emotional response to a specific life event or a significant change. So this could be the loss of a loved one, relationship problems, Problems, a job loss, moving across the country, financial difficulties, or any other challenging and straining situation. And unlike major depressive disorder, which is a little more chronic and persistent, situational depression is time limited and it's directly related to a particular triggering event. Now, this is not an exhaustive list because understanding the type of depression that your partner might struggle with is helpful, but it's not actually the most critical part of being a supportive and understanding partner. What can feel more important is to understand your partner's triggers and coping mechanisms. Having this knowledge can help you avoid potential triggers and provide appropriate support during those difficult times. Now, most of us who are in a relationship with someone who struggles with this, we feel that there is a burden of responsibility on our shoulders to show up the right way and to take responsibility for our partner's feelings. However, this is too large of a burden to carry. So if you are dating someone who is depressed, you'll want to consider getting a additional support for yourself because you're going to need an outlet for processing your emotions and the difficulty that comes with being in this kind of relationship. Now, here's a few things that you're going to want to keep in mind if you are in fact dating someone who is depressed. Number one, it is normal to feel exhausted, burnt out, resentful, and a little pissed off sometimes. These feelings are not uncommon and you might find yourself feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, or even neglected as you're trying to support your partner through their difficulties. It's essential to actually acknowledge that your feelings are valid and they're a very natural human response to a very difficult situation. However, it is also essential to handle your feelings in a constructive and empathetic manner. Number two, you'll want to readjust some of your expectations about the relationship and your sex life. Many of us enter into relationships with a certain set of expectations and ideas of what that relationship is going to look like. However, it's important to understand that depression can significantly impact a person's sex drive and libido, as well as their overall energy levels and just general interest in intimacy altogether. It's also really common for couples to have or have what's known as a desire discrepancy, even when one person isn't depressed. 
So if you're entering into a relationship with this idea that sex is always gonna happen effortlessly and that both partners are gonna wanna have a similar level of desire, then understand that this isn't even true for the healthiest of relationships. However, if you're dating a partner with depression, it's important to be understanding patient and communicative and even find other ways to connect that might not involve sex. Now, this doesn't mean that your needs should never be met at the expense of always meeting your partner's needs. So understand that professional help may need to be sought out so that your partner can be encouraged to deal with their depression. Now, this also extends to outside the bedroom. It can be incredibly tough and disheartening when your partner doesn't want to offer any help around the house or to spend any quality time with you. So it's also important that you do express your concerns with your partner about how their depression is affecting your overall relationship. Of course, you want to avoid blaming or criticizing them for their lack of interest, but rather focus on how it is affecting you and how you are feeling. And remember that taking care of yourself is the number one priority. Tip number three, you'll want to learn how to validate their emotions and be empathetic. Learning how to actively listen to your partner, including talking about their feelings, is really important as long as you offer this without judgment. Using validating language such as, I can see you're feeling really overwhelmed, or it sounds like this is a really tough experience for you. These types of statements can be really helpful to show understanding and express your care and support. Make sure that you avoid minimizing or invalidating their feelings by saying something like, don't worry, you'll just get over it, or it's really not that bad, is it? And lastly, make sure that you avoid the temptation of offering unsolicited advice. Unless your partner is specifically asking for your help, refrain from giving advice. Remember that you are not there to try and fix their emotions, and you're certainly not a substitute for professional help. Number four, do not blame yourself for their emotions. Don't personalize it. It is easy to take things personally in our relationships. It's really important that you're not blaming yourself for your partner's emotions. Do not take their lack of interest as a personal attack and rather understand that these are the symptoms of depression. And number five, avoid enabling their behavior. When somebody is feeling sad in the relationship, it's really tempting to want to do everything possible to try and lift their mood and to make them feel better. But it is really important to have clear boundaries about what behaviors are acceptable and what behaviors are not. Avoid making excuses for any negative behaviors that your partner displays or allow them to avoid their actual responsibilities. Make sure you hold them accountable while also being understanding of their challenges. And number six, never let your partner's depression stop you from having fun in your own life. It is incredibly important to maintain a balance between supporting and showing up for your partner and taking care of your own well-being. Continuing to have fun and engage in activities that you enjoy is not only healthy for you, but it is also beneficial for your partner. If you are not taking care of yourself, it's gonna be really hard to show up and support your partner. It's going to allow you to bring joy into your life to reduce your own stress and prevent burnout. Plus, enjoying your life and having fun does demonstrate to your partner that it is totally possible to find moments of enjoyment and happiness even during difficult times. You might end up being a really positive influence on your partner that may provide hope and encouragement. While this can be a really tricky topic, I hope that today's video brought you some additional perspective and some ideas on how you can show up and support your partner as well as maintain a life that you enjoy. So if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button, drop a comment below on how you've navigated dating or being in a relationship with someone who is depressed. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one.